When Democrats retook the House in 2018, there were a lot of progressives, myself included, who very strongly made the case against Nancy Pelosi and why she should absolutely not become House Speaker again. It's because she's not progressive. In fact, she's pretty conservative, contrary to popular belief. Now, when we made this case against Nancy Pelosi, there were people who were outraged, people who are Democratic Party loyalists, liberal celebrities like uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Soledad O'Brien is someone who also spoke out against progressives who thought Nancy Pelosi shouldn't be the speaker again. Nancy Pelosi got most of that Obama bill through. Mm -hmm. Their argument was, how can you possibly say Nancy Pelosi isn't progressive enough when she spent her entire career fighting for gay rights and women's rights? How can you say this about her? It's blasphemy to even criticize her. Well, I hope that all of these people who denounced the progressives and really who tried to scold us into submission, I hope you're paying close attention right now because what Nancy Pelosi is doing is she is revealing her true colors to you. She's really conveying to you that she's not very progressive. In fact, contrary to popular belief, she actually is pretty conservative for someone who's supposed to be the leader of the party that represents the working class. Now, she put her conservatism on full display by attacking where the energy is currently in the Democratic Party. She called out Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ayanna Presley, Ilhan Omar, and uh, Rashida Tlaib. And by attacking these popular progressives, what you're doing is attacking the Democratic Party base. Because those four women, they're where the energy is in the party. So Nancy Pelosi attacked them in an interview with Maureen Dowd of the New York Times. Here's what Maureen writes. Some House liberals have been furious with the Speaker since she capitulated to Republicans and Democratic moderates and agreed to pass a bill to send more funding to the border, giving up demands for stronger protections for the migrant children ensnared in the nightmare of shelters there. I asked Pelosi whether, after being the subject of so many You Go Girl memes for literally clapping back at Trump, it was jarring to get a bad headline like the one in HuffPost that day. Quote, what the hell is Nancy Pelosi doing? The article described the outrage of the squad as AOC of New York, Ilhan Omar of Minnesota, Rashida Tlaib of Michigan, and Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts are known. Pelosi feels that the four made themselves irrelevant to the process by voting against, quote, our bill, as she put it, which she felt was the strongest one she could get. All these people have their public whatever and their Twitter world, she said, but they didn't have any following. There are four people, and that's how many votes they got. So just pause for a moment and think about how insulting and condescending this is. I don't care about AOC and uh, Rashida Tlaib and what they have to say about the bill that I passed. I don't care if they think it was a capitulation to Republicans. I say it was good, so that should have been good enough for them. They should have voted for it, no questions asked. And if they don't think that it is uh, progressive enough, too bad. That's what she's trying to convey to people. I don't care about these very popular progressives. Fuck them. That's basically her sentiment. Now, she was asked by Maureen, you know, how do you, how do you respond when progressives continuously call you out for not being left-wing enough? Here's what she said. If the left doesn't think I'm left enough, so be it. She literally does not care. And this shouldn't surprise anyone. This is what progressives have been saying. Because Nancy Pelosi only cares about one thing and one thing only. And that is appeasing her corporate donors. If they tell her to jump, she asks how high. That's what it's about. See, she doesn't like members of the squad, as they call it, like AOC and Ilhan Omar, because... They often pit her against her donors, right? They make her look bad because when AOC comes out and says, look, we should have Medicare for all, that forces Nancy Pelosi 
to defend her corporate donors and the health industry and say, well, you know what, maybe we shouldn't have Medicare for All. Now, she can't present you with a good reason because her lack of support for Medicare for All hinges on the money that she's receiving. It's corrupting. So she has to find a way to make it seem as if, well, you know, just being against Medicare for All is the rational position, when in actuality, we all know this is a capitulation to her donors. If her donors say, look, I want you to back off of Republicans because, you know, we want to make sure that we can make money off of these concentration camps that Donald Trump is locking immigrant children in, then she's going to back off because that's what Nancy Pelosi does. She raises a lot of money. She is a prolific fundraiser. How do you think she became the Democratic Party leader? She became the Democratic Party leader by raising more money than anyone else. In other words, she sold out more than anyone else. When you raise that much money, that corrupts you. When you take money from every single special interest in existence, that has a very corrosive influence. That influences you to think about what they want as opposed to what the American people want. And, you know, it wouldn't be as bad if this was just contained to Nancy Pelosi. And she was the only one who was getting corrupted by money in politics. The problem is that since she's the leader, she also is making a lot of other Democrats dependent on her corporate fundraising, which in turn makes them also sellouts because they're selling out by proxy of Nancy Pelosi. She acts as a conduit for corruption and she's bringing everyone down. She's making the entire aggregate Democratic Party less popular. I mean, it's not surprising that Democrats lost more than a thousand seats in state legislatures across the country under her leadership. It's because voters aren't excited to come out and vote for this brand of corporate Democrat who doesn't want to do anything for them and is only appeasing their donors. So do you understand now? I need people to understand that when we called out Nancy Pelosi, unlike what you were saying we were motivated by, ageism and sexism, we were calling her out because this is what she represents, corporatism. And it's not just that she alone serves the donors exclusively, but then she is also going after people who don't serve the donors, who actually represent the people because these new progressives make her look really bad. When you juxtapose AOC with Nancy Pelosi, the difference is night and day. You see how conservative Nancy Pelosi is. So AOC responded to Nancy Pelosi and she said that public whatever is called public sentiment and wielding the power to shift it is how we actually achieve meaningful change in this country. Ilhan Omar also chimed in saying, you know, they're just salty about who is wielding the power to shift public sentiment these days, sis. Sorry, not sorry. And that's exactly right. You see, these progressives, Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, AOC, they make corporate Democrats look so bad because basically all that we've had is corporate Democrats. So when you actually get to see people in power who are fighting for the people, it really forces other Democrats to step up and do better. And they don't like that. They like just being able to be slightly less shittier than Republicans and then keep getting, you know, elected into powerful positions because, you know, it's easy that way. But when you actually have to put up and present progressive policies, they hate that because that means they're going to be pitted against their corporate donors, which again is something that they absolutely do not want because Nancy Pelosi got to where she is today because she's cozy with these corporate donor. She's as corrupt as you could possibly be in DC. So that's why she's lashing out. Now, I also want to show you what Rashida Tlaib said because she was interviewed by Martha Raddatz of ABC News. And um, she, you can, you can tell she was not happy with what Nancy Pelosi said here. And um, here's what she said about why their voices should be respected and not dismissed as Nancy Pelosi frequently does. The Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, said that you and the three other progressives made yourself irrelevant to the process by voting against the bill. All these people have their public whatever and their Twitter world, she said, but they didn't have any following. There are four people and that's how many votes they got. Do you know people like us, people like me and Ayanna Alhan and Alexandria, 
We're reflective of our nation in many ways, but many of us didn't run to be first of anything. But more people like us have been missing in the halls of Congress. More people like us, people of color, have been missing in the chamber because most of us, and Ayanna Presley says it more beautifully, people that are closest to the pain need to be at the table making these decisions. Guess what? We know what it feels like to be dehumanized. We know what it feels like to be brown and black in this country. And I'll tell you right now, we're not going to stand by and sit idly by and allow brown and dark skinned children to be ripped away from their parents, to be dehumanized, to feel like. What would you say to Nancy cages. Pelosi? What would you Look, say directly I, I to Nancy Pelosi? Honor the fact that we are there, that 650,000 people are represented by each and every single one of us, that there is some sort of, I think, in many ways, um, uh, something special about having a refugee, having a woman that, you know, has experienced alone what incarceration has done to her family, right? All of us have these experiences that I think have been missing in the halls of Congress. Honor that, respect that, put us at the table. Let's come up with a solution together. But there is a better approach. They passed something out of, the, out of the House. Still, I will not support anything that is broken and that dehumanizes people. But guess what? Mitch McConnell sent you back something that was worse. And I'll tell you right now, it was focused on him. Uplift the women, especially the women of color within your caucus that are out there. Because I'll tell you, more people like us, more people like me that come out to vote, we win. All of us win. Okay, and they I'm going to have to stop you there for time. You, it is very disappointing that the speaker would ever try to uh, diminish our voices in so many ways. Again, I appreciate your comments. That was great. You know, I feel for Rashida Tlaib and she she made a really powerful point a few months ago when Nancy Pelosi attacked her and said, look, we're often trotted out to show people how diverse the Democratic Party is. But when it comes to actually listening to what we have to say, then we're told to go away. I'm paraphrasing, you know, Rashida Tlaib, but that's basically the sentiment. This is what Nancy Pelosi does. She doesn't want their ideas because they're saying something that goes against the status quo, that goes against the donor base. So that's why Nancy Pelosi stands up against progressives more so than she stands up to Republicans because Republicans don't really pose a threat to her donors. Republicans aren't for forcing her to take stands against her own donors. It's progressives who are doing that, which is why we see her be more, you know, strong of a resistor, so to speak, against progressives than actual Republicans. It's all about the money, and I wish it weren't that simple, but Occam's razor, it's that fucking simple, unfortunately. Now, AOC talked about, you know, the recent capitulation to Republicans, and here's what she had to say regarding Nancy Pelosi. I don't believe it was a good idea for Democrats to blindly trust the Trump administration when so many kids have died in their custody. It's a huge mistake. This admin also refuses to hand over documents to Congress on the whereabouts of families. People's lives are getting bargained, and for what? Now, in response to that tweet, journalist Jay Caruso urged AOC to not, quote, insult Pelosi and to instead try and learn from her, even though she absolutely has no clue what she's doing. But AOC then responded with all the times where Nancy Pelosi basically insulted her. Quote, a glass of water could have beat a 20-year incumbent. The Green Dream, or whatever it's called. They're public whatever. Those aren't quotes from me. They're from the speaker. Having respect for ourselves doesn't mean we lack respect for her. It means we won't let everyday people be dismissed. So Pelosi can take all the shots she wants at AOC, but the minute AOC responds, even if it's a tepid, polite response, well, she's still framed as, you know, the bad guy. Because how dare you ever question the wisdom of Queen Pelosi? How dare you? I mean, it was the same way that progressives were responded to by people like Whoopi Goldberg when we said she shouldn't be speaker. How dare you speak out against Nancy Pelosi and say she's not progressive? She's been fighting for your rights before you were born. It's frustrating. Because if you go against the status quo in D.C., then this is the response. You are automatically framed as the bad guy because people like Nancy Pelosi, people in power, they're inherently good. And anyone who challenges power, anyone who speaks truth to power, they're smeared. They're labeled as, you know, the bad guys or the bad girls in this case because, you know, you, uh, you shouldn't question authority. You should just be blindly obedient. But I want to switch gears because I think it's evident to everyone, Nancy Pelosi is a conservative. But thankfully, 
we don't have to sit by and just allow her to condescendingly rich explain to us how she's better than everyone else and how she's a master legislator and AOC, you know, and Rashida Tlaib, they have no support. We don't have to stand by and just let her do this. We have an option now. She has a very progressive primary challenger named Shahid Buttar. And here's the way that he responded to these types of corporate Democrats like Nancy Pelosi. Here's a snippet of his speech from the CA Dems convention. I'm running to challenge the leader of our party because when corporate centrists tell us that we have to accept a for-profit health care system that kills Americans every day, we have to be ready to say we're not going to take it anymore. I'm running because when corporate centrists tell us we have to accept fossil fuel extraction committing us to climate chaos that will kill your kids and your grandkids, we have to all say we're not going to take it anymore. And I'm running because when corporate centrists tell us that we have to accept a prison industrial slavery complex making a mockery of justice, we must say we're not going to take it anymore. Now, just by listening to him speak for 45 seconds, you already see the difference between him and Nancy Pelosi. It's clear. He is not afraid to say, I support Medicare for all because he's not being corrupted by these pharmaceutical and health industry campaign contributions. Do you understand? Everything goes back to the common denominator in politics, money in politics. Democratic Party loyalists and operatives, they're never afraid to call out Republican Party corruption because it's pretty brazen. But they, for some reason, they give Democrats a pass. They say, well, you know, it can't possibly be because of corruption, which is why Nancy Pelosi is so horrible. It has to be just due to an ideological disagreement. But it's not. Democrats are just as easily susceptible to money and the corrosive influence it has as Republicans are. And you see the difference when you look at Sh Shahid Buttar challenging Nancy Pelosi and Nancy Pelosi herself. It's all about the money. Now, I'm going to leave you with some more of Shahid Buttar because he's your ticket. He's offering you a way out of this nightmare with Nancy Pelosi as leader of the Democratic Party. And I think it would behoove all of us to support him and send him whatever support we possibly can manage, be it a dollar or phone banking, because he's someone with actual principles and values, and he's fighting for real progressive policy positions because he's not sold out. He's not corrupt. And I think he makes that very clear in this ad. So I'll leave you with this. Support Shahid Buttar. Watch out, Washington. We the people are coming to take back Congress. And we're bringing with us some big ideas like Medicare for all and a Green New Deal. We did it in New York. We did it in Minnesota. We're doing it on the national stage. And now we're bringing that voice back to San Francisco. My name's Shahid Buttar. I'm running for Congress. I'm an immigrant. I'm a Muslim. I grew up in rural Missouri. When I was 16 years old, my family lost our house as I graduated from high school. I got my undergrad degree while working full time after 10 years of night school. Then I went to Stanford to study and teach law. I've fought for your rights for 20 years, from San Francisco to Washington, D.C. as a constitutional lawyer, policy advocate, writer, educator, and grassroots organizer. And now I'm running to serve the people of San Francisco by fighting corporate corruption in Congress. We don't have the corporate cash that's kept Nancy Pelosi in office for 30 years. In fact, we just don't take corporate money. That's why we're mobilizing the community, meeting in living rooms and neighborhood centers, why we're out in the streets fighting for change, demanding universal health care, fighting for your children and grandchildren's right to a future free from climate crisis and a government for, of, and by the people instead of the 1%. A voice for school teachers, working class families, and immigrants, the 99%. This movement is just getting started. After 30 years of the same representation, San Francisco deserves a champion willing to return our city to the front lines of the progressive movement. Our city stands for inclusion and pride, peace and justice, and environmental sustainability. We can't wait another 30 years for our leaders to evolve on climate change. Delay is no better than denial. The time for action was yesterday.